people and hello chad looks like this is going to be our very first podcast podcast should we call it a podcast holy smokes it's our first time in doing a podcast well after like a billion times of talking about it on facebook yeah <laughs> we've been like doing guest appearance with other podcasts so it's time for our very own rf cast all right, so the unofficial name is RF Cast or yeah. RF Talk. We haven't officially decided it yet because we're lazy thinking of really creative names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, getting to the to the subject. Overwatch, overhyped, overmarketed, overbought, and damn, over so many people on the OBT. We Overwatch. <laughs> Somebody's gonna clip that anyway. Uh, all right, so let's just go over the numbers for Overwatch here. All right, like for example, for previously in the open beta last May, I think according to Blizzard, they just had like more than nine million players online, which is according to some uh, other Greek research that it broke records compared with Star Wars Battlefront, like around seven million. Okay. And then Division like four, and then with Destiny two. So it's like a big milestone for Blizzard to doing another record-breaking moment for their online new IP. Okay, so to clarify, 9.4, 9 million. Yeah, more than 9 9 million. More than 9 million on open beta and on launch. And then on launch, it managed to get like around 7 million players, which is still big. Like, for example, only less than 2 million from the original beta testers. Yeah, actually, normally uh, you get a lot less from open beta to to actual buying the game. Yeah, proven like more than... 30 or 40 percent will actually buy the product mm, okay and uh, and this isn't the uh, whole it's, it's not a it's not a what do you call that uh, a fluke of some sort because even the critics are really praising this game yeah that's correct like for example destructo just gave it a perfect 10 over 10 and surprisingly it's still a big uh, big score for destructo to do that kind of review especially for an online game. Destructoid hates a lot of games. Ah, yes. <laughs> they hate a lot of games. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, surprising. Even like GameSpot and IGN give it more than 9. Mm. So it's not a surprise, but still, more more critics are praising it for making it a really good game. All right. So now uh, we just went through the numbers. So what is the reason behind these numbers? Let's go over the, the main reasons, the broadest reasons you can think of. Uh, we don't have a lot of time for this. Yeah. So uh, we want to keep it within around 10 to 15 minutes. So we're not going to go too much into detail. Wait, but this is our debut. It should be longer. Longer? Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Boss said so. So let's do that. All right. Currently the most hyped game. We, are, we can agree on that, yes? Yeah. It's really hyped. Like, yeah. even after an announcement from BlizzCon, like November 2014, people are just going bananas over on the cinematic trailer. Like... You've seen the trailer for Overwatch, right? The six-minute uh, Pixar-like quality of video. Oh, that the yeah, with the where they actually featured the museum and everything. Yeah. And I was really looking forward to the game after I saw that. I really wanted to play Winston very badly after I played yeah, saw but that. Did you play as Winston? No, but I ended up playing as Bastion a lot. <laughs> <laughs> damn, damn camper. Salt. So, Powered ro- machinery right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, the marketing was amazing. You get yeah, you got this uh, cinematic trailer. Yeah, it does a uh, hundred times better than Square Enix cinematic tra- trailers. Yeah, they're more on making a story compared to making a really high end video, making you know uh, ultra realistic vi- uh, graphics. Mm-hmm. They're more on the cartoonish type. Okay, they, they're going like how Pixar are doing it, more on emotions. Yeah, that actually, since uh, we mentioned Pixar so much, it actually does feel like if Pixar decided to redo Team Fortress 2, to be honest. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, but the the characters, actually, the characters that were created for Overwatch, there's 21 unique characters right yeah. now, and each of them are really unique. They're I, really more diverse, like from their, from their ra- nationality, from their race, from their behavior their personality mm-hmm. even their play style are different yeah the well i'd like to focus more on uh, on how they play as they do they do uh they re- even as supports there are like five or four different supports there are five mm. or four different yeah. uh, attackers defenders etc of course the characters behind these uh these kinds of 
uh, characters, their how they play. They also reinforce how players will identify with them, just like in fighting games. Yes, just like in MOBA, like each player has their own roles. Mm-hmm. You can always be like the, the more on the offense. You need to be more on the support. You need to be a defend. Mm-hmm. I mean, defensive. You need to be the tanker. So you need to keep the team alive. Those kind of import, uh, like in the basketball team, with a center, forward, a guard. Okay, so uh, yeah, and on the character design you have all these interesting characters you have you have um, a robot monk you have yeah, somebody yeah, mecha monk yeah, yeah. and we got gundam wing <laughs> we got gundam wing or macross whichever you prefer and then another anime character <laughs> yeah we, we have uh we have somebody from korea that's piloting a giant robot yeah a gamer from korea which is more like a reference to the never ending die hard gamers in south korea yeah, and everybody seems to assume that, uh, that the healer Mercy is from Germany. Yeah, actually, she's in Germany. No, I, I believe she's Swiss. I believe no, she's she Swiss. speaks in German. Oh, okay. Uh, but okay, I must have read somewhere else online that she was Swiss, and I believed it. <laughs> so they, they have all these, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, they're all from different countries, they, so they make all these little stereotypical jokes. Nobody really takes it too seriously. And... Uh, it's all kind of good, honest fun because it seems to balance out with their quirks and how they play. Uh, that that uh, even the Australians, the uh, Roadhog and what's the, who's it? Uh, the other guy, Junkrat. Yeah, Junkrat. Uh, there, everybody just has all these crazy personalities behind them. Yeah, well, especially like going back to the marketing, they also release a couple of uh, animated shorts just to flesh out the story, like the first debut with Winston and how the try to recall all the old Overwatch agents back on mm-hmm. active duty. Then it's the second, the second short is involving Widowmaker, one of the uh, fan favorite villains for the Overwatch cinematic trailer. How like how she does how she does her work, and then the third one involving the Shimada brothers, uh, Hanzo and Genji, like giving the backstory how they started the feud, or mm-hmm. what really happened with the brothers for their. Uh, clan incident. Yeah, personally, I pref- uh, my favorite is really Winston Short, because I just find the guy hilarious, and he's basically a a, a, a nerd, and I love it with battle armor and gorilla powers. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, for me, pretty much like the dragons uh, short with the Shimada brothers. It really makes it uh, like an entirely own story, mm-hmm. and then also have the fourth one with Soldier Seventy Six with the hero short. Uh, like yeah. showing him as a, you know, as a no, uh, going no lone, lone yeah. wolf. Yeah. He's like this, uh, everything is serious and everything. And uh, you, you, he comes off as the super jaded guy, but he still, he still remembers on how to be a hero. Yeah. It's pretty cute. Uh, but anyway, any character you can like, any character you want to pick up is actually pretty easy to pick up. You actually don't even have to be that good on your on your Twitch shooter skills yeah. as people might assume uh, since the characters play very differently and it's more of a team based focus yeah right? that's true uh, so we're going to talk about the simple gameplay the simplistic gameplay of Overwatch making it you know it's really short like in a span of 4 to 7 minutes you can finish a match but how it was really intense how fast paced the, the combat is you really mm-hmm. are more hungry for more battles to participate Oh uh, yeah, you uh, on average you can have maybe a ten minute match. Yeah, so like for example, you just play like two hours. You can like have fifteen to twenty matches, or maybe more. Depends on how lo- how long they held the defense or whatever. Yeah, or how sucked your teams are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has has the teams been a has uh, the kind of players you are with really affect your experience in Overwatch? Well, yeah, like it's more. If you're really more used to playing the modern based shooters like Call of Duty, more on mm-hmm. focusing on kill kill death ratios or just getting more more frags, here in Overwatch you're going to retract that and more focus on bringing the team to win. Okay, so, so it's more objective based gameplay, yeah. which is a uh, something I picked up from TF2. Yeah, and that's I actually agree with that. I normally look up uh, what the team might need to win. Though I normally gravitate to certain characters that can yes. help us. Since with that. Overwatch, it's really encouraged to switch characters during match. You can mm-hmm. always stick to one character, but if you can, well, why not? But if you're really more focusing on winning the game, 
and there are certain times that you need to switch, you better switch. Yeah, except if everybody's playing May, you don't change oh, yeah. that. <laughs> the there's great a, ice walls. I, there's a game where we played four bastions. And we won. We won. We won. Because I was the best bastion ever. Right. <laughs> I, I don't right. understand the hate. I don't understand. <laughs> I get I get sniped off all the time. Well, it's really annoying, like especially, you know, seeing the play of the game and then seeing the character doing no effort and letting his turret doing the act, doing the kills. I make it I make it a point that on my play of the game I at least transform into turret. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least maybe in the siege mode. And uh, anyway, uh, but a uh, play of the game though, they, I heard that they were going to update that. that they're trying to change it to. Uh, to be more centered around what the objective really is instead of getting yeah, uh, uh, what you call that uh, a kill series yeah instead of focusing on getting the most kills I think Blizzard is trying to imp- improve the play of the play of the game clips like highlighting more on support like for instance you mm-hmm. manage to land a for when you're like you're playing Z- as Zarya mm-hmm. since it's the most underappreciated tank in the game but her ultimate, the gravity, uh, the, the graviton gravity surge. Uh-huh. Once you do it right and doing it at the right timing with a certain character, like for example, Diva or Fera, mm-hmm. you can land a team kill. Yes, actually, whenever I see the gravity well, uh, the gravity well, uh, the graviton surge, graviton surge. All right, the graviton surge. Whenever I see that, and I now I have an ultimate with Diva, which is one of the more common uh, characters I play. Yeah. I just okay. Time to walk in there. <laughs> like for example, when you hear uh, Zarya shouting out her ultimate uh, skill, that's the cue for you to do your u- ultimate. Since all the opponents are locked down for a certain number of seconds, that's actually an interesting part about uh, about how Overwatch tries to simplify gameplay. There's a lot of audio cues that the game tries yeah. to teach you. So it's really encouraged for you to wear a head wear a headset. And I think uh, Blizzard Jet also mentioned that it also equipped with the Dolby Atmos uh, feature where you can really enjoy a full surround experience. So meaning you can hear the audio cues from other opponents mm-hmm. in different directions. So it's an advantage for you if you're wearing a headset. Because it's always going to be high noon. High noon. <laughs> there was a game I had to deal with three McCrees. <laughs> It was always noon. <laughs> yes. Even if it's like, you know, 1 a.m. <laughs> Still high noon. <laughs> Somewhere in the world. All right. Uh, yeah, going back. Yeah, getting back. Actually, yeah, the gameplay is kind of simplified. A lot of things overlap with each other and teaching you how the work game works. Uh, despite me having sort of the gripe of the lack of multiplayer. Uh, ah, I mean, single player. The la- no, well, I can multiplayer, I'm sure. <laughs> Oh yeah, well yeah, I think like four game modes, it's still like, it lacks, well for some people. No, uh, well okay, at launch I can forgive this. I can forgive four yeah, gameplay modes, but I am I am expecting much, much more in the future. Yeah, well we can talk about that uh, later in this series. Yeah, okay. Uh, though, yes, the actual gripe is, or the normal gripe of the audience or the market would be that why did you make a game that's only multiplayer? You have seen this complaint for even online games. Yeah, like we can mention, like previously on Street Fighter V, like we, like our last review, we have put a pending rating since we are still waiting for the June update for the extended story mode. Yes, because we are we review in terms of a regular consumer, not somebody who's looking to compete, which is the reason why they released Street Fighter V rather early. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but lack of single-player content is normally a complaint. Why is it not in Overwatch? Yeah, that's one of the interesting part with Overwatch. You can notice that the only, well, we can consider this as single-player content, is the training, or the ch- tutorial mode, or mm-hmm. maybe the versus AI, like you're going to have to try out your character. You'll be, playing, uh, you'll be fighting against some drones, like for a short period of time. And after that, you have to compete in multiplayer. Well, here are some important factors with the, that we noticed for Overwatch for making it a really good game despite the lack of single-player content. Mm-hmm. So first one here is being a bite-sized action game. Oh yeah, so 10 to 15 minutes, you're done. Yeah, so you, meaning that like, if you're on a rush or maybe you don't have enough time to play a game, 
you can enjoy Overwatch like a couple of matches before you go to sleep. Like an hour, you can get four to five matches. Yeah, time is a very common issue for mobile players like me. Uh, that's one of the bigger reasons why I don't play as much, at least multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. true. But but in Overwatch, I can I don't even think about it. Yeah, that, yeah. Like I can agree with that. Like the ch- uh, people in the ch- in the public chat just go, guys, Overwatch, let's go. And yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. I can. I can do. I can do maybe three games. <laughs> yeah. So moving on, another another reason is that is that it's really easy to learn. Like for example, if you're a first time playing a first first person shooter, there's no pressure on doing some difficult mechanics or technicality technicalities like in other modern age shooters. Like what we can give an example. Uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Like for Call example, Duty. there's a progression level. You need to play as certain number of matches before you can unlock certain items. Mm. But here in Overwatch... Everything is available. Yeah, 21 characters are all available. And the only thing you need to uh, for your character uh, progression is just to unlock cosmetics. Okay, yeah, that, that's actually an interesting point. That, I, that was a huge gripe I had with Star Wars Battlefront, where yeah. a lot of guns were locked uh, until later on, so you're stuck uh, just with basics. Yeah, true. However... An issue there is how long will the game last without at least updates on the content? Because mm. everything is already available, so eventually people are going to get tired of it. Uh, co- common issues with at least MOBAs is within two weeks to a month, a new patch will already feel old for most players. Yeah, and then for example, like for MOBA, like you need to unlock certain characters since most of them are on a rotation. Yeah, that does happen a lot. Yeah, like yes. for example, in Heroes of the Storm... Uh, for example, you really like to play as Nova, but she's still locked. You need to purchase her to really play her in the game. But Or if you're really a uh, cheapskate, you have to wait for her during weekends to play it. Another thing that makes the, these, uh, these multiplayer games, the on, multiplayer only games strong, is how healthy the player base is. The community. If yeah, you will. the fan base. Yeah, go online, go. Any gaming channel right now, Overwatch is there. Yeah. Uh, the biggest PR stunt that I saw with uh, Overwatch would be uh, the the giant action figures. Actually, oh, yeah, really awesome. So I'm really hoping that Blizzard is gonna launch a series of action figures for the Overwatch characters. Because so, I'm gonna buy one, or mm. maybe buy four. <laughs> four. Oh my goodness. Okay, uh, but the problem that uh, you will see community made content. Uh, uh, regarding Overwatch comics, fan art, uh, fan videos using source. Yeah, fan videos using source. That what's that's something I didn't expect. Yeah. Uh, you have joke videos, memes, play, memes, play of the game. Who is not? Nobody's tired of it yet because yeah. it's just hilarious. You know, even speaking of play of the game, they, it's one of those most uh uh you know those the rewarding part in Overwatch. But people manage to make it as a fun way to. Make jokes like, for example, have you seen? Have you seen how they made with like SpongeBob? I haven't seen SpongeBob, but or maybe with Julio Valiente. Julio Valiente is my favorite. I I, I, I really spot it was spot, spot on, on for McCree. Yeah, spot on McCree right there. Even uh, so, I'm gonna look for uh, McCree with a knife next time. Yeah, <laughs> put it as a bon, uh, legendary costume or legendary skin. Please, Blizzard. <laughs> okay. Uh, but also, thanks to the games uh, being easy to, di- to digest, the community doesn't seem to get that salty over bad games. Yeah. It's really surprised that, for example, with Call of Duty, you can, you'll be hearing kids making trash talks against you or maybe, uh, like for example, in MOBAs, these have been, uh, with the so-called P noise we have. <laughs> well, yeah, it's controversial, I, but I, I need to open that. that. I will bring that gift onto Overwatch. I just bought oh, it. Oh, please. <laughs> get, I'll be asking Blizzard to ban your account. Tanks will be in malls, Chad. <laughs> Tanks will be in please malls. Please no. Please no. <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, communities will eventually lead to a competitive scene. I am guessing that there are already forums... Uh, on fire, talking yes. about how uh, competitive rules will be set for for uh, Overwatch. I'm not sure what the format will be at this point. I think I've been hearing some rumors that some are suggesting that for competitive uh, co- competitive gaming, that only one hero is allowed 
per team. So there should be no duplicates. Like for example, you need two Magris or two Divas. Mm. You'll be sticking to one. Just like the Those still debatable mode. though. Yeah. It's kind of like Highlander mode in uh, in TF2. Yeah. All right, uh, but I did hear that ESL is going to participate in making a league out of Overwatch. Yeah, I'm hearing some news and progress with ESL that they are now go really serious about Overwatch. Like for example, I, I think I saw Twitch promoting ESL for the community tournament. Mm. So it involves community, not more the pro players. So it's still more on a casual type, but you know the usual weekly tournaments, those kind of ideas. But a community yeah. tournaments, maybe, yes. Yeah, but with ESL, you can expect some big news for the competitive scene. All right. So, things in the future, probably. So, what else are we maybe expecting in the future? You know, we can expect, like, hopefully, world for in the Philippines, maybe we can see some community gatherings. You know, uh, like Blizzard sponsoring some other, some other esports organizers doing monthly or maybe... Uh, yearly Overwatch events. You're suggesting that Blizzard might do a Valve, like for mm. for holding maybe, events. but not in a large scale. Maybe a smaller scale, like community based. Mm. Okay, that sounds interesting. Uh, what uh, one thing I'm expecting is one uh, balance changes. I'm really expecting. Yeah, that. it's uh, it's important for this kind of game since more players are involved. Competitive gaming is now being part for the Overwatch, so expect a lot of updates on balance every month or maybe weekly. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm expecting at the, maybe at least a few new maps in the near, very near future. Yeah, even we heard some news for McCree being nerfed, and even D.Va getting some improvements on her balance, on, tweak, uh, on her abilities, like maybe, maybe cool down on her defense matrix, or maybe on some improvements on her boost. Or imp imp uh, impor yeah, uh, improving the boost. Maybe some rocket launchers, maybe a bigger robot. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 a better diva is a is a diva for me. Anyway, uh, one thing I'm actually would like to see, in, uh, in, in Overwatch right now is what Dota Two is doing. Because if you check out what, uh, what how Overwatch plans to monetize through microtransactions with loot crates and everything, it's exactly pretty much like Dota right now. Yeah. But for, yeah, in this case, cosmetics. Yes. There's no changes, there's no disadvantage for everyone who spends more. They just only get more to have more cosmetics to make them look good. So, what I would like to see very near in the future for Overwatch is a community workshop where people can submit their skins, yeah. people can submit their, uh, their uh, proposals for designs and stuff, and maybe hats. Uh, hats. Basically, hats. Hats. Uh, ha because why not? You have 21 characters there, and uh, Valve does a great job of making events out of these or making a big a big deal out of the really nice hey, ones. For example, TF2. Yeah, TF2. TF2 re holds regular uh, seasonal events, actually. Yeah. Another thing I would like to expect from Overwatch, I am looking forward to Halloween already. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Some surprise Halloween team modes. Yeah, actually. M more modes would be welcome. Or exclusive Halloween costumes. Yes, actually. All right. Uh, I think that's everything we can talk about on Overwatch right now. There's there's still a lot of things up in the air. So, like, what can we expect for Overwatch in the future? Aside from, yeah, big tournaments, definitely. Yeah. Big changes, maybe in balance, definitely. So, how uh, about for maybe we can expect expansions? Like, like World of Warcraft expansions? Well, not really more on... Uh, with World... Well, like... Uh, content updates, but maybe like new story, added story, like I would more honestly, on the lore. I would really appreciate it if they decide to add single player content on yeah. Overwatch, especially if it's considering playing through the lore of the characters. Or maybe like those uh, ideas, like with Half Life Two, episodic uh, episodic releases for certain characters. Like for example, they can release a story mode for Magri. Or yeah, actually, that that really does work for me, in my opinion. Uh, I would really like it if they do uh, exactly what they did with StarCraft. You know, they have like uh, the Dova Corps. Remember the uh, series of mini missions? Yeah, exactly. Just to flesh out the story. Just to flesh. Yes, because uh, they they've released all these shorts. There's this big story going on with saving the world and everything. I don't know how great the story would be. I'm guessing it's not 
the it's probably going to be quite simple. Yeah, but it, but well, you want to see yeah. it. With the bright, in the brighter side, maybe they can use you can release expansions, but it's not a mandatory re- uh, expansion, meaning that they can still enjoy playing the core game mm-hmm. without purchasing the expansion, as this kind of expansion can be more like story modes or maybe something to flesh out the lore in Overwatch. You know, if they do cr- make a community a community shop, I'm guessing, and you can submit maps. Yeah. Probably uh, the community itself will come up with these things. Yeah, and don't forget the hats. The hats. The monetized hats. Yes. All right. Uh, well, okay. So Overwatch, completely hype. The best marketing uh, I have seen in a while yes. for a game. They're using animated shorts, digital comics as their mode for marketing. They're not doing any you know, uh, marketing gimmicks with brands, well, except for Coke. For their theatrical release for the cinematics, and as expected, of Blizzard decided from taking forever to develop something, they deliver on what they they develop. And yes, and this game is came from their scrap project with the Project Titan. Yeah, I actually have no idea what Titan is. Well, it's one of their ambitious sci-fi MMORPG that they're really trying to complete with their all-out passion. But unfortunately, with some circumstances, that they had to cancel it. Oh, okay. I heard that's where Tracer came from. Uh, I think Soldier Seventy Six also. Oh, not okay. sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, that's a that's actually an interesting tidbit right there. But anyway, yeah, uh, it delivered on a game. Everybody enjoys Overwatch right now. Yes, uh, everyone's hyped. Um, hopefully this is a trend that keeps on going because a great game is a great game, and we would like to keep appreciating it. Uh, and it looks like it will get a competitive scene considering the competitive format it already has. Yes. And, and also expect for our review in the coming days. Oh, a review by, by Rick? Uh, well, Rico's going to be doing the voiceover, and she also shares her input about Overwatch. Yes, yeah, she, show- she shares her input about Overwatch a lot. Yes, she's really <laughs> hyped. <laughs> she, she shares it as, as soon as we type Overwatch on chat. She'll just pop out saying, Overwatch? <laughs> We love you, Riku. <laughs> we, we, we are absolutely excited for having her on board. And what better way to start it out, with, aside from the Street Fighter video, with, uh, is the Overwatch video. She is getting good titles. Yeah, and don't forget to watch her five reasons why Overwatch is awesome. All right. She really made a really great video about it. Okay, so I think that's it for now, Chad. Yeah, I uh, think yeah. we're all good. All right, so... Thanks, Chad. Again, I'm Lentropy, and this is RF Talk or RF Cast. We're not yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll yet. just keep it RF Talk for now. We're okay. still thinking of a creative name, but we're lazy. <laughs> and yeah, don't not, forget. Not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't forget. We'll be covering Manila Majors next yes, week. Yes, uh, we'll be. I, think, I mean, this week, sorry. We'll be covering Manila Majors. It's going to be. My goodness, I hope I am awake the entire time. Oh, well, yeah. One week of nonstop coverage. Yeah. And hopefully, we could get some really good. Uh, Matches. I, we're gonna get good matches. I'm just gonna. I'm just already crying inside because my favorite team is in the lower bracket. Yeah, like for example, for ESL one Manila, like Wings make a surprise. Uh, yeah, they were the dark horse, and they, they boy did they march. Yeah, and also don't forget, we'll be also be at ToyCon this uh, Friday to Sunday, and we'll be doing doing some videos. So be sure to show up if you're on cosplaying. So we are all gonna be sharing the same traffic problems. <laughs> because Manila Major and is we're right all busy. Tycon. We're we'll all be busy. Yeah, we'll all be busy. So we'll see you there. And do say hi uh, again. Thank you for uh, thank you for dropping in. Thank you for listening in. And this is RF Talk. And we'll see you next time.